Okay, so um, continuing with our uh, collection of limit theorems, we just finished uh, proving uh, the limit theorems for the simple algebraic properties, such as addition, multiplication, division, subtraction. So now we're going to prove um, some more basic results on limits of sequences. <clears throat> So 3.2.4 theorem. Okay. So what does this say? It says if x is a convergent sequence real numbers and if xn is greater than or equal to zero well n then the limit is greater than or equal to zero. So hopefully that the statement of the theorem kind of makes sense. So, okay. So let's look at the proof. So we're gonna do this by contradiction. So, the way of contradiction, Suppose the opposite, right? So if we're going to suppose that we have a sequence of positive real numbers or non negative real numbers, they converge to a limit less than zero. All right, see what happens. So the limit x min equals to x, suppose that's less than zero. Okay. So then, if that limit, which we know that it's convergent, we're assuming the sequence is convergent. So if that limit is less than zero, then I know something about what I can do with x. I can say that then epsilon equals to negative x is greater than zero, right? If, the, if x is negative and I multiply it by a negative, I get a positive, and I can choose epsilon to be that number. Okay, so because it converges to x and because epsilon is some positive real number, so then we can say something about the definition, right? Then there is some index k so that the distance from that to that is at most epsilon, right? And again, this is equal to negative x. Whenever n is greater than, greater than or equal to k. Okay. Now, absolute value is at most um, negative x implies, right? So um, just recall that if um, absolute value of a is at most b, then negative b is at most a, which is at most b, right? This is actually a biconditional statement here, right? So we know that is at most epsilon. So we know that negative epsilon is at most x in minus x, which is at most epsilon. 
And this is like saying, so that, right? I just replaced epsilon by what it was. But here, look right here. X in minus X is at most minus X, right? So this implies that X in is less than zero, right? We just add X to both sides. Why is that a problem? And by the way, this is again, in okay, but why is that a problem? There's a problem. Again, we're doing this by way of contradiction. So we're looking for something false. Why is that a problem? <laughs> look here and look there. Anybody? Xn can't be less than zero. Right. This is a sequence of non-negative integers for all non-negative reals for all um, in the naturals. And for n greater than or equal to k, we, they have to be less than zero. So this is a contradiction. Okay. So hopefully that, that one makes a little bit of sense. Okay, so um, let's look at another one. Well, what's the next one? It's 3 plus 2 plus 5. So, um, if x is equal to the sequence xn and y is equal to the sequence yn, are converging sequences with so with x in and most y in to all ten then the limits also satisfy this property. So this is really can be thought of as like a corollary to everything else we've been doing. I'll give you a hint. You know this, right? We also know this result here. What if I just say, I'll, I'll write it down for you and see if any of you can figure it out. Let Zn be the sequence Why do you think I would do that with regards to, so I want to prove that's at most that, right? So what can I say about this sequence Zn with regards to this theorem over here? Like, 
when you see them I'm trying to zn would have to be greater than or equal to zero for it. all on. exactly Perfect. Perfect, perfect. Now we just need to establish that this thing actually converges. Like, does the end converge? Well, by a previous theorem, maybe 3.2.3 part A, one of the things we know that if we have two convergent sequences, then the difference of the sequences does converge and it converges to the um, difference of the limits. So by a previous theorem, uh, what was that? I would say previous theorem. Limit of Zn equals to the limit of yn minus xn equals to limit of yn minus the limit of xn. Okay, so then by that one, 3.2.4 That's greater than equal to zero. So each of those pieces, each of the terms of the sequence is greater than equal to zero. So the limit by that is greater than equal to zero, but this is also equal to this. If that minus that's greater than equal to zero, Hence, that's greater than equal to that. And we're done. So this is actually a technique that appears quite often where you you have some relation you're trying to establish between <clears throat> two separate sequences and you define a new sequence in terms of the difference of those sequences in question. Um, and this happens not only for sequences, but also for um, a, a lot of um, functions involving analysis type topics where you're trying to you want to use the relation between a function and its limit or a function and something else to kind of describe it. In fact, I encourage um, all of you to go back to your calculus books and look at the proof of the mean value theorem, where essentially the proof of the mean value theorem takes a difference between two things and then you're able to extract some information that you want after looking at that difference. So it's a common technique to have in your bag that. Okay. So let's look at another theorem. Three point two point six. Okay, what does this say? So if X is a convergent sequence of reals. with a less than or equal to xn 
which is less than or equal to B for all natural 10 and A and B just some arbitrary numbers, then A is less than or equal to the limit of Xn, which is less than or equal to B. Okay, so any ideas? Oh, we can maybe use this one, and I'll give you a hint. Look at that, look at that. So that's my hint over there. You see how they would relate? My goal is to say, say I want to prove, oh, I'll, I'll help you out some more. So I define these new sequences to somehow help you prove this. And the hint I'm telling you is to use that. So maybe focus first on this right here. Why would that be true? Anybody? What's the relation between A and N and X N? What's the relation? Uh, is it that the limit of A N is less than the limit of X N? Well, just well, more basic than that, just how Kind of hard for me to not just write it out. Isn't that true? Yes. Right? Because AM is just a constant. What's the limit of A? It's just A. AM. So this is true for all n going equal to n. They are both conversion sequences that satisfy that. So the limit of a n is at most the limit of x n. So by 3.2.5, a, which is equal to the limit of a n, is at most the limit x so a is less than or equal to x n that establishes that how do you think you would establish this that is at most b it's the same thing just apply this theorem again right because then you like also uh, x n is at most B n, right? For all n. Which by 3.2.5, you get the limit of x n is at most the limit of B n, which is equal to B, which is the constant. So I'm leaving it to you to fill in those holes. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording so I can partition my videos on um, the smaller pieces. <laughs>